Today, Tilly Fox will be teaching you how to set up a Sonic Wall TZ270. So let's begin. Alright, so the first thing that you want to do when you get your Sonic Wall TZ270, uh, you want to look at the rear panel and you want to make sure that you have your internet connection plugged into this port. That is port X1, the WAN port. Then you want to plug in your computer, the management computer that you're going to be configuring your sonic wall with, in port X0, LAN, and that's right here. Once you have that all connected, it should give you an automatic IP address if your network card is set to DHCP. So once that's complete, we want to enter in the appropriate IP address, and then the username and password. So the default IP address is 192.168.168.168 Then we press enter Alright, so the first time you will be logging in You will see this page, Sonic Wall Network Security Appliance It lists some of the features And then it has the login page So for this device, the default Login is admin, and the default password is password. And then we log in for the first time. Alright, so you do have two options. You could launch the Sonic Wall Setup Guide. This I recommend for beginner users, or if you're an advanced network engineer and technician, what you could do is configure manually if you know your specific network policy requirements, along with the IP scheme and all these settings. But for our case scenario, we will be setting up with the setup guide. So let's click the top one here. Okay, and now it's listing some information. So it says one. Welcome to Sonic OS Startup Guide. Listed below are various guides containing the series of steps you will go through to configure your firewall. So step one, set up your login credentials. Step two, automatically detect or manually set up your device, which we're doing right now. And then three, review and confirm your settings. So let's go ahead and click on next. All right, so from here, your default login credentials are admin and password. We want to change this, so I will go ahead and enter in a strong password, and then we will come right back to the next page. Okay, now that we have a strong password created, we go ahead and click on next. Alright, then it's going to pick up your IP configuration automatically. I may have the DNS servers blurred out, but as you can see, it's picking up the WAN IP address of 192.168. 091 and this is the appropriate WAN subnet mask that we want the default gateway is correct and the DNS servers are correct as well so this is good click on next all right and then at the bottom it says automatically secure crash analysis reporting we want to have that checked and then periodic secure diagnostics reporting for support purposes go ahead and have that checked and then click on done. And voila, this is uh, all configured. You now have your Sonic Wall up and running with the basic configurations to get internet to the different devices that connect to the LAN port. So now that we have that completed, what we want to do is register our device. And then change the LAN portion because we want a different LAN number. We don't want the default IP address. So we will go ahead and configure that in just a moment. Since this device has not been registered, I will register it for the first time. Click on register device. You want to enter in your Sonic Wall username and password to register. If you don't have a username, you have to actually create one. So, for my case scenario, I do not have a MySonicWall account, so we need to go ahead and create one. So we scroll over here, we will sign up. Click on sign up, and then you just fill out all of the information. You would configure your account, your company information, your personal information, and then extras. 
Me personally, I will not go through this process through the video because there is some private information that I do not want viewable in the video. So we'll go ahead and get back to the next slide after I complete this form and sign up. Alright, so now that we have my Sonic Wall account created from this website over here, I can enter in the username and password. So I'll do that and then we'll register this device. We'll be back in the next slide. Okay, now that we registered the device, you can see our product uh, company name here. You can see my name right here with the company information. Um, and then you have license. So how Sonic Wall developed their security programs for their operating system is it's by the license. So if you want extra security for your business and your network, you're going to have to actually purchase each license. And each license actually, I do believe, expires every year. So you have to renew the license every year. And the fee for a general license from Sonic Wall is about, I think, $200. So if you wanted the threat protection suits, um, you wanted the essential protection, all this stuff, you would have to purchase the license. And then you would have to go ahead and get it licensed. So the only thing that we have licensed is the hardware warranty until December 20, 2022. Um, we have remote implementation service, which is unlicensed, but we could activate. And then we have a global VPN client and then SSL VPN. And so that's licensed. Let's see. Let's click on this to see if we can get any information. So yeah, that's basically it. Now that the device is completely registered, we want to go ahead and configure the basic IP settings for the LAN. So let's do that now. So this device is a little bit new to me. I haven't had a lot of experience configuring such devices, but what we will do is go through each setting and I will try to give you guys a demonstration on how this device works and how to configure each part of the device. All right, so let's go to home and then we want to go to, I do believe, network. From here, we want to configure the main IP address of the LAN zone. And we want to make sure that the IPv version 6 is disabled. And so let's see. It's already configured. So we'll just go ahead and leave that blank for now. But under the IP version 4, we want to change the LAN settings to reflect the appropriate IP address. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so once we click on the interface, click on the IP address, and then you want to click on this little pencil icon, edit this interface. From here, you're able to edit interface X0. This is the LAN port, and what we want to do is assign the appropriate IP address of 10.13.0.1. We will keep the subnet mask default. The default gateway we could leave 0 default, and this will be the default LAN. Domain name we could add, so it says in this field it is used to bound an accurate domain name with all web services provided by this interface. The value can be one of the following, a fully qualified domain name address, so your company name, or a string address, so an IP address. When configured, all web access along with SSL VPN services should be accessed via only the domain name. Any other attempts ought not to be allowed. Note that the access via exact IP address is implicitly trusted whether the field is set or not. To enable this feature, make sure enforce HTTP host header check on is administrator page is enabled. All right, so once again, this device is pretty powerful. So what we want to do is give it a domain name of www.telefox.corp and hypothetically this should work let's see yeah that should work so leave that add rule to enable redirect http 
P to HTTPS. We want that enabled. We don't want SSH. We don't want to be able to have people shelling into the program to be able to manage this network and this interface. And then we don't want a simple network manager enabled for now. If we did, um, basically enables remote management, but we won't allow this. Then from here, user login, we want to enable HTTPS. So it allows users logins through HTTPS, enables users with management rights to log in with SonicWall. So go ahead and click on that. And let's click on advanced to see if there's anything else we could configure. So for this, we do want to enable auto discovery of sonic wall switches. And we want to enable some of these protocols. So let's see. Okay, so let's go ahead and enable multicast support. Enable 802.1p tagging. The rest we will leave as default. So we don't want to advertise certain routing protocols. We don't want manage traffic only. And then we don't want to enable these settings so that asymmetric routing support and redundant aggregate ports. Under expert mode settings, use routed mode. Add NAT policy to prevent outbound inbound translation. For this, we could leave blank, it's perfectly fine, and then bandwidth management. We could manage how much bandwidth ingress and ingress could be. We can enable bandwidth limitations for the ingress and egress traffic, but we won't want to change this because we will just want to leave it default for now. If the policy requires certain kind of manipulation of bandwidth or bandwidth limitation you would set it here so if it's a server that you know won't get past a certain bandwidth or it's a group of users that you don't want to get past a certain bandwidth you would enter that here for this case scenario we won't change any of this then click ok and now your lan should be configured so let's see let's go back over here and as you can see, we cannot reach the router anymore unless we reach it by the 10.13.0.1 address. So what we want to do is go ahead and do that now. Open up a new tab and type in 10.13.0.1. Okay. As you can see, we're able to get to the 10.13.0.1 address. So now what we want to do is click on advanced and log in for the first time with that new IP address that we set. So I'll be right back. I need to enter in the username and password, and then we will be logged in for the first time. All right, we're back logged into the SonicWall 270. And let's go ahead and go through the overview of the home menu and we will continue in other series. All the different configuration setting this Sonic Wall device has to offer. So as you can see, you have under home, it is your device's name. Then you have dashboard system. And that's located right here on the left. So underneath the first option is devices. Devices is going to give you a graphical overview of what's connected on the Sonic Wall 270. So as you can see, it's giving a status of the power um, of the firewall status along with the LAN management connection and WAN connection. Now, each port is not configured yet, so we will have to configure that in just a moment. Alright, so when we log in for the first time under the appropriate IP address of 10.13.0.1, we will get the following page. This is the home page associated with the dashboard and system. 
So under the first tab, you'll see devices. Then you have summary, network, and threat. So under devices, this is going to list your device. Give a physical representation of the lights on the device, along with some of the system statuses, system usage, network interface, services, security services, along with some other settings. General for this video will be blocked because there is some private information that shouldn't be revealed to the public as the name of the device, the product code, serial number, so this will be blacked out most likely. So if we navigate still inside of the main system dashboard, we could go to back. So if we go right here, we go to the back and see what devices are connected. So as you can see, the power supply is connected, 12 volt power supply. And then you have your two cords connected, one for the LAN cord, which is connected to my computer. And the other is the WAN cord. And that's connected to the main internet service providers router. Then it's giving us some other information such as storage. So for this device, you could actually install an extra storage. So as you can see, the primary storage, there's one gigabyte, but then you could also install a secondary storage unit, which I think you could install up to about 64 gigabytes or something like that of hard drive space. To expand your device's capability to save and store logs. So if we go back to home, um, we want to go to summary. Summary is going to give us a general overview of what's going on on this network. So as you can see, there's a list of infected hosts, critical attacks, encrypted traffic, along with traffic distribution, and some kind of services associated with that kind of traffic. Then you have observed threats, so you would see intrusion, viruses, spyware, botnets, and sandbox all labeled in this category. Then you have top countries that are attacking your device, along with top users and their block sessions. Next is the network overview. Network overview is going to give you some information about your traffic along with the kind of devices that are connected. So as you can see, there's a few devices that are connected. This one, um, it looks like is an IP address probably of Sonic Wall. Then you have an IP address of another device, most likely some servers or web servers online. And then you have some top users. So you have admin and then unknown users. So it really does give you a nice graphical overview of your network kind of traffic that's running along with the IP addresses associated with sessions. And then last but not least is threats. So as you can see, there is no top intrusions, no spyware threats, botnet threats, or viruses. And that's because this device has just been configured. Over time though, as I deploy more systems on this sonic wall, there most likely will be threats bound to take place. So you would see that in this graphical user interface queue. So that's all we're going through with Sonic Wall today, the basic setup, going through the summary page and the device dashboard system overview. Like I said, this device is for advanced users. It's a next generation firewall, so you're able to really provide high security to your company and your network by implementing this device. We will go through some of the other configuration settings and future videos but for now we're gonna leave it off here if you enjoyed this video please like and don't hesitate to contact tully fox for all your consulting needs you have a good afternoon